unfortunately, today is our uh, deadliest day of uh, uh, COVID uh, thus far. And also, it is our biggest uh, day of uh, new COVID cases uh, thus far. Uh, if I could, um, you know, I'll go over those briefly with you. Um, uh, the first death is a 17-year-old young lady who was a resident of Lancaster. Uh, she expired in the emergency room before she could be admitted. Uh, the next is a man in his 30s who was a resident of the city of Dallas. Uh, he died in an area hospital. The next is a man in his 30s who was a resident of the city of Garland. Uh, he also was in a hospital. Uh, the man in his uh, next is a man in his 40s from Carrollton who died in a hospital. Another man in his 40s from the city of Lancaster who had been critically ill in a hospital. A man in his 60s who was an inmate um, at a state correctional facility and had been hospitalized. A man in his 70s who was a resident of the city of Dallas and was uh, critically ill in an area hospital. A woman in her 70s who was a resident of a long-term care facility in Dallas. A man in his 80s who was a resident of a long-term care facility in the city of Dallas. And a man in his 90s who was a resident of a long-term care facility also in the city of Dallas. Um, of these, uh, of the cases requiring hospitalization, who reported employment, okay? 77% have been in critical infrastructure workers uh, with a broad range affecting occupational sectors. And this would include healthcare, uh, public health, agriculture and food. And by the way, agriculture and food mostly means grocery stores. Um, public works and essential functions. Of the cases requiring hospitalization, most have been over 60 years of age and had at least one underlying health condition. I keep reminding folks of this, but um, fully, uh, let's see, what is it today? It is about a third, back up to about a third, of the folks requiring hospitalization have diabetes, okay? So if you're over 60, particularly if you're over 65 or if you have that condition, um, you know, you're much higher risk of being hospitalized with this. Of the 94 deaths uh, reported today, 40% have been uh, associated with long-term care facilities. Now, most of the over 3,000 who are sick are not in long-term care facilities, but the mortality rate is much, much higher there. All right, so um, with the governor's decree yesterday opening up more businesses uh, throughout Texas and here in, in Dallas and here in North Texas, and without uh, any um, uh, grace in there for areas like ours that are seeing uh, increasing cases, it's up to all of you, both business owners and individuals, to make really good personal responsibility choices, okay? The uh, governor's orders have changed yesterday, but the underlying science has not. The recommendations from the CDC and your public health authority and your infectious disease leaders at your hospitals, your epidemiology leaders at your local hospitals, that has not changed. And so, for instance, in places with substantial community spread, like we have here in North Texas, you should not go to congregate settings, right? So whether that be um, a backyard barbecue, whether that be, um, uh, you know, any other congregate setting, that's to be avoided. As the governor said yesterday, particularly if you're over 65, you really want to avoid um, leaving your home for any sort of an unnecessary uh, trip. Of course, the, the challenge with that logic, when, as that veers away from uh, the recommendation of our local medical community and the CDC, is we don't live in a vacuum, right? So if we don't choose to go to a crowded movie house, but our neighbor does, um, that has an impact uh, on all of us. And so really, I want you to think about, as you're thinking about how to act in this new age of kind of things are going to be open, um, ask yourself, okay, President Donald Trump has said, and the CDC has said, that you don't want to loosen these restrictions, these safer-at-home restrictions that have been so successful. 
until you have two weeks of decline. Now, what does decline look like? Well, that would be decline in deaths and decline in number of cases and decline in the amount of hospital admissions. So let me give you some stats, you know, so you understand what we're dealing with. Um, I count weeks, or, or I say I, the health community counts weeks uh, uh, beginning on a Sunday and ending on a Saturday, okay? So on the, the uh, three weeks ago, that would be uh, the April the 12th through April the 18th, um, that was thus far our deadliest week. We had 33 of our residents lose their life to COVID. And we had 97 average daily cases of COVID. Last week, we saw a dip in both those numbers and we were hopeful uh, from that. And so that would be from 419 until 425, uh, you only had 21 people die and you had 84 people on average a day test positive for COVID. Uh, today um, is our third day of this week. And so I want to you know, give you this big disclaimer, the week's not over. You know, God willing, we'll have a, a great week from you know, going forward with less deaths and less cases. But so far this week, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, um, our average per day of, of cases is 110. So the highest average thus far that we've seen so far. And the total number of deaths is, is 13 on pace um, to uh, be right at uh, or slightly above or slightly below our deadliest week. So that's where we are. So clearly that is not two weeks of decline, right? Even if we wipe out this week, and we take last week, last week would be our first week of arguable decline. Although as Phil will talk about when he comes up, we're not actually seeing a decline in hospitalizations. Okay, and the hospitalizations are inching up a little bit. But we have not seen two weeks of decline. That's, that's number one that the Trump administration and the CDC says you need before you loosen up the restrictions. And I'm not telling you this to second guess the governor. I'm telling you this because now it's up to you to make good decisions. It's up to you to decide what you want to do as a business owner and a resident. So thing one we didn't meet. Hadn't been two weeks of, of uh, decline. It's our deadliest day and our, our most active um, day of new cases. Okay. Thing two is around that you got to have those two weeks and you got to have sufficient testing around it to make sure that as you open up these restrictions and those folks go back to work, you can provide those workers the safety and those patrons the safety they need with rigorous testing around those folks. Uh, Texas, unfortunately, uh, is 49th in testing. We were dead last yesterday. We got a little bump, or, or Michigan actually maybe got a little lower. But anyway, we're 49th today. We're well below where we need to be according to our local health doctors, um, to get to where we need to be, okay? They say, you know, we can make a quantum leap towards getting there if the federal, if our uh, federal partners and our state partners could get the reagents and the kits that we need at UT Southwestern and Parkland that we've been asking for for a little over three weeks now. But unfortunately, those haven't happened yet. Those are scarce. We, they haven't come through with those yet. And so... Um, where we are is, is, depending on whose numbers you look at, we either have one-fourth as many tests as we need or one-third as many tests as we need, according to the epidemiologist and the infectious disease doctors at the local hospitals. Okay? So you look at those two criteria, you say, well, what does that mean? Okay, there's, so there's two criteria to loosen the economy for me to feel comfortable going out and doing this thing that I want to do because I've been cooped up in my house. And the first is two-week decline, which we haven't met. And the second is testing, which we haven't met. And what they tell, tell us is that when you try to do these things as you're going up, as you haven't met the peak yet, but you're going up, really bad things happen. And there's some models out there. You can play with those on the Internet um, if you have the time uh, to, uh, to do it. I think Rafael Anchia, State Representative Rafael Anchia, 
who I think is at Rafael and Chia on the internet, um, pointed out one that you can actually plug Dallas numbers in and see what happens with uh, certain assumptions. Um, so you can do that, but here's the thing. The point of all that is this. Um, regardless of what you think or what I think, on, on May the 1st, we're going to see more and more businesses open, and we're going to see more and more movement out there, and we're going to see more and more opportunity uh, for, for uh, asymptomatic COVID to bump into you and get you sick. And so the question that you've got to ask yourself is, what's the best decision for me and my family, right? Um, and so um, just because the law allows um, you to do something, open your business, doesn't necessarily mean you're going to. And you've seen some responsible business owners, similar to what you saw last week with Houses of Worship, where the CDC says, in places of substantial community spread, you shouldn't have in-person worship. And so you saw that. Many, many, uh, you saw all the imams at the beginning of Ramadan, then you saw the Catholic diocese, the, uh, most of the mainline religions all say, hey, you know what, we're going to follow the CDC guidance, not uh, the allowance from the governor that we can all have a, a large worship service. Similarly, you're now seeing movie theaters saying, well, I understand what you're saying, but um, we're going to follow that guidance that it's not safe to do this yet. So most of those aren't opening either. But some will, right? Some businesses are going to open. And some of those businesses, it may be perfectly okay uh, for, them, uh, for them to open. But you're going to have to now be in the position of making that decision for yourself and for your family. And remember, it's not just for you as a, you know, maybe you're feeling young and invincible and stir crazy being in your house. It's, it goes back to what we talked about early, Operation Protect uh, Nana, Grandpa, and Meemaw, okay? Because there are people out there uh, who fall in this category, like we've talked about, where they're over 65, they have an un underlying condition like diabetes. And um, if we, you know, spread this and they get it, you know, really bad things will happen there. Also remember, that if we follow the science, if we all make good choices, and, and it's not what we're allowed to do, it's what public health and what the CDC tells us we should do. If, if, if as many of us as possible will follow that, that's the surest way to get our economy moving again, right? If we don't have a huge spike in cases, that's the best way for us to be able to get to that next group of businesses and the next group of businesses, or in Governor Abbott's orders, to be able to get to where it's a 50% opening and a 75% opening. But that can only happen if we make good choices um, in the face of, of these orders uh, that are not uh, aligned with where our, our local public health uh, community is, right? Um, well, our part, you know, what we'll do there, and I'll let Phil talk uh, in a moment about things that are going on in our long-term uh, care facilities. I want to say a couple of things about that before I turn it over to him. But, um, you know, for our part, what we'll do is we're going to work with businesses. We had calls, you know, after the governors uh, came out with his orders uh, yesterday. Uh, our public health uh, community took a look at those. Our business community looked at uh, those. We're going to work with our business community to try to, uh, to the extent that these things are going to happen, to have them happen just as safely as, as we can for the employees, for the businesses, and then for you. Um, we're seeing um, uh, increasing um, outbreaks uh, in areas, now we're having outbreaks in a sausage factory and some food uh, service places. I guess Phil probably answers some questions about that. Uh, we're seeing uh, a total of 177 inmates now that have been confirmed positive uh, with COVID, uh, increasing outbreaks in nursing homes. One of our calls tonight that Phil and I will have, or Dr. Wong and I will have tonight along with uh, the head of FEMA and others is how we get more nursing homes tested faster, okay? Um, and so, um, again, that's really gonna be important as, as every day uh, we're announcing more, uh, uh, seems like every day anyway, we announce more deaths at these nursing homes. 